Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're going to explore playing with dry brush and wet on wet and a little bit splattering, slightly mixed media with some gouache to paint this beautiful mystical meadow landscape. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Got to play with your brushes, play with the paint, play with the water consistency to really understand how you like to play with watercolor. Not everybody likes to play with it a certain way. <laughs> and I was here to show you some techniques, what I would do for certain things to create these kind of looks. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Um, also check out my Patreon at ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. We also have a Facebook group where we do uh, monthly giveaways, weekly challenges, and also patrons get first dibs on watercolor workshops and retreats, which is a nice little perk. And you can find out all the information in the link below in the uh, description box. Just click, hit those words, show more, and you'll click the description box drops down and you can see all the supplies and everything else and the links to all my stuff. So without further ado, let's get painting this abstract landscape. Okay, so for this technique, we're going to go over a few supplies first. I'm using Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I'm taping, I taped it down with match, Scotch Magic Tape. It's probably like a 7 by 9 inch piece. Um, we do need to have some white gouache. We got our paints here and I go over them as I use them. And they're always in the description box what I used. Um, I pretty much use similar the same paints. We have a 3 4 inch flat wash brush from Princeton. It's from the Velvet Touch series. And we can probably maybe play around with some. Uh, other brushes like the Neptune 12. I don't know. I usually kind of intuitively paint and paint as I go. It will help to have like a piece of scrap paper too. So when you're splattering or doing things like with, with the gouache, you don't have it all over your stuff. So uh, not too many people like to use dry brush with watercolor, but I like to play around with it. And basically where is the paint is pretty dry uh, and then you're going on the paper. So you're not really wet on wet. I'm going to mix up some color first. Some nice dark green. So I have some Prussian blue here. I'm going to grab some burnt umber in here also. More Prussian blue. And then I'm going to put in some nice yellow, cadmium yellow deep. And keep grabbing yellow. I'll keep mixing till I get a nice deep color of green. A little more in the blue. Maybe grab some ultramarine deep. I will change that green to a deeper green. It's more like a sagey kind of green, which is nice. So the paint should be thicker. Let's bring blue again. I'm going to clean up my brush and grab some yellow. I like to mix my yellow. I like to mix, I mix my greens because it looks more natural. I'm going to go back in. I want this green to be pretty dark. All right. And not too blue. It's getting a little blue. Okay, good enough. So the flat wash brush. Now for this landscape, maybe picture the horizon line. It's kind of like right here. Maybe a little bit, a teeny bit longer than just right in the middle. Just kind of figure out where it's going to be. You can make yours lower, higher, whatever. So here we got the paint on the brush. I didn't dip it in water and the paint's pretty wet, but this paper has a tooth to it. You see, I'm kind of twisting it and I have this nice dry brush going and I'm going to go across here on the chisel angle. I'm going to grab some more of this paint and I'm kind of mushing the paintbrush. You can see this nice dry brush happening. I'm going to grab some more paint. You really need a good amount of paint. I'm not kidding. Um, mixing up with some paints. Great. Even the yellow and the blue. I'm going to touch a little bit of water in here. Uh, here we go. Get the little, see that's like almost like butter and thicker. So I'm dry brushing this like this first. Now you could do this probably after if you wanted to, but I'm doing it first. So it's thick paint in here, as you can see. Kind of going down here. I might want to add a little more ultramarine blue. Get some blue in here. Okay, and now <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bleed it. So we dry brushed it on. You see here, you can even kind of like swipe it going across down here, putting some of that green into that foreground. Where are we going to put some other greens and stuff like that and browns? 
I'm going to now clean up my brush with some water. All right. And I'm going to have a little bit of water on my brush. And we're going to start to push out the paint a little bit. See? I grabbed the water just where the dry brush is on the edge. I'm going to go back in, clean up my brush, tap it on the paper towel. It's still wet, but not super wet. And now I'm just going to kind of blend it. And I like this uh, flat wash brush because it gives it a nice texture. Now I can go up, swipe up a little bit, clean up my brush, tap it back on the paper towel. Oh, there comes that blue. Now I'm going to do this twisty thing here. Again, so it's going to have a little dry brush kind of stuff happening. And you're just kind of moving your brush. You're getting this like very mystical quality to it. You see that? Clean up my brush again. <laughs> Tap on the paper towel and go back in here and grab some of the edge of the paint you saw. And now you can kind of blend it up here. Some will go on the paper, some will not. It'd be kind of a dry brush situation. And you can kind of push it on the bottom. And you have some water in there. See? It creates this nice kind of fun texture. The paintbrush is separating. Maybe you don't want that because I'm showing some lines. But I love this kind of look. Right? So now on the bottom here, let's grab some, let's picture like, Maybe there's like a, a road or something over here. We're coming this way. I've grabbed some burnt umber. Put a little water on my brush. A little brown. Gonna put some brown in here. Again, some pigment got in there, some not. Twisting and turning. We're gonna start to get more wet and wet in this section. I'm gonna grab some water and the paint that we had mixed before, that green. Now I'm gonna start to grab some more yellow. We're just gonna keep twisting our brush and moving it. It's starting to get wet and wet. I'm going to grab more yellow and some of that burnt umber. We want more like a harvesty kind of colors going in with the yellow. All that good stuff. Twist it, turn it. If you want to go really swiping a color in like this, do that. See, now I just wiped in yellow all over here, even up to the edge. So it's more wet on wet down here, not super wet. We can play with that in a second. I'm gonna add some more burnt umber. Again, just twisting my brush, grab back that green color. I might grab some more yellow to make a light green color. I'm just tippy tapping. I'm going to add some more water over here. And this is where we're going to start to splatter some of the gouache. So I'm going in here, burnt umber, darker green, kind of walkway field here. Mm. Don't like this white in here, so I'm going to go in here and just kind of tap it in, play around with that. Yeah. Okay. Squash, get it loose, put it down here. We do want to cover that top part. Um, get whatever floppy brush you have that you want to use. I'm going to use my number 12 Neptune series. I'm getting this pretty loose, wet, the gouache, you see? And everyone's like, what kind of gouache? Um, I'm having permanent white. It could be any color, gouache, titanium white, whatever. Whatever's cheapest. And let's start to splatter a little bit here. Big ones. And this should just nicely mush like in the field here. Right? And up here. We wanted to put that piece of paper up there so we're protecting the top half. We're doing all little mushes kind of down here. Even down in the little road. It will look like a little cotton or something. It's going to do this that it's really kind of cool isn't it <laughs> I can put a little bit up here it's up to you but I want some more up on this side okay yes 
already I'm loving it. It's going to keep doing its thing or it's spreading out a little more. Um, I want to make this more like trees up here. That's what my intention was, but you know, sometimes they don't go right. So I'm going to take the brush, the flat wash brush, grab some of this green color, greenish sagey color. And again, I need a little blue. I'm trying to get this nice dry brush technique back in here for trees. And if I have to add a little more blue, I'll add a little more blue to this green. Get a little darker. Just tapping. Right? And I'll clean up my brush. And I'm going to grab some of that color out here again. So it looks like trees in the distance and trees up top there. You can bleed and blend and wet on wet if you want, but you know, sometimes it's nice to have texture. And those are our mystical trees. Going back up here and adding a little more water. We just change that a little bit more. I do want to remove some of this by lifting and tapping back in the paper towel. If you don't want those little scrapey lines from your brush, you know, just kind of remove them. So, so far, I'm loving this little meadow field. While it's still damp, you can play with the credit card. I didn't mention that, but now you can and scrape up a little bit, like the road. So it looks like you have grass coming out. You can only really do it and see it when it's kind of damp. Otherwise, it just folds back in, the paint folds back into the color. But I like what's all the stuff, all the stuff that's going on right now, right there. Simple, done in like ten minutes. It's a really kind of sweet, you know, atmosphere kind of looking metal field. If this is a little too much, like it's harsh, you can take another brush and go in and just tap it a little bit around the white, just to soften it, because it shouldn't be so harsh. What I mean by harsh is that you can really see the white white gouache splatter. I'm just going to tap it a little bit to soften it. Just sweet, isn't it? Just really kind of sweet. And you can add some depth going back in, some color down in here, some browns. I'm just going to twist in some color. More greens. Could be some nice bright green. Add some chartreuse in here. Play around with it. But really, instantly, in like 10 minutes, you have this really pretty um, meadow field. You want to add a little pink. Going to grab some pink. Going to mix it in here. Pinkish brown. Mm, just a little bit. Play around with that a little bit. Or even orange. I've had my cabinet red light. Play around with adding some of that color. Tap, tap, tap. Put some yellow in there so it's orange. Could be like orange poppies, but I like the white. Kind of nice combination of the two. A little bit of orange. Just tapping, 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 tapping. Just adding a little bit of bright color. Just to soften that up a little bit. And that's really kind of it. I mean, the road less traveled. <laughs> The orange, I'm gonna tap a little bit of that over here. Kind of fun going into the road a little bit. Do some yellows. This is our little meadow, right? Very mystical. We'll let this dry and we'll remove our lovely tape. By the way, once it's dry, you could go back in, take some more white gouache, and kind of just tap in. You know, obviously, it's gonna be really intense. You want to tap in some white blooms. If you add some water to it, it will be more translucent, which is kind of nice. So I tap the color in, I'll grab some water and kind of tap around it. 
So it's a slightly intense, but not too intense because you don't want just white dots everywhere. Because we, you know, obviously back up in here where it blended, you lost some of it. So maybe you want to go back in and add some white. Again, you can just tippy tap. And if it's got more water with the gouache, it will dry more translucent. It's all preference, just things to play with. I, I just like to play with color, watercolor, a little bit of gouache. Never hurt anybody. <laughs> all right, so then we move the tape to reveal our beautiful picture. Do this carefully. Some people say that it rips their picture. Um, if you just pull it off really carefully, it shouldn't do that. And reveal the most beautiful landscape, kind of a super soft, semi-abstract, you know, meadow. So I hope this was fun. Hope you learned some cool techniques using the dry brush. And then after you have the dry brush put down, you can kind of wipe it, you know? It's this dry brush wiping, wiping, swiping, and splattering that creates this really kind of mystical, beautiful landscape. Change up the colors a little bit if you want. Um, you can add more yellows and oranges or have it more green. Yeah, it depends what you want. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We have a lot of fun over here. I'm all about having fun and not worrying about how it's supposed to be. Anyway, it's all a journey. So take care and I'll speak to you soon.